Good morning. We are off for another week. Um, Mum is just planting some of the really late tomatoes that I've got. Um, these are the ones that I took, like the really the last cuttings I took of the tomatoes. I gave most of them away, um, but these are the last couple. And we were thinking about putting them in the big tomato bed that we've got up the way, but actually that's quite full and I've planted quite a lot of stuff along the edges of that. So rather than crowd them out, um, we're just going to put them in here where we took the last of the first early potatoes out earlier in the week. Fill it all the way up. So these ones have got really, really tall. Um, they are just, uh, these are both black Russians. Uh, we had a couple of these outside last year and they, they were really, really late because they were done the same way from cuttings. And they came up absolutely fine and we got some fruit from them um, even before the blight hit. So uh, yeah, I've got high hopes for these. To be honest, you can never have enough black Russian tomatoes. Like you just make masses of passata and put it in the freezer and that's you sorted for the year. Done. There we go. So the other thing we're gonna do this morning is just because we're trying to clear a bit of space around the back of the greenhouse, when we were planting out the rat potatoes, which is uh, spelt R-A-T-T-E, I don't know if you say it rat or ratty, um, but they are a sort of derivative potato of the pink fir apple, but less knobbly. So they're a main crop late, but we just had one left over. We couldn't fit in the bed and we just stuck it in this pot. But we're kind of trying to clear the space a bit now. So we thought we'd use it as a tester and see what's in there. And actually from this little glimpse, not bad. There is something under there at least. to be honest we really did not look after this pot I'd forgotten it was round there so it really hasn't been watered so anything coming out of here is complete bonus and to be honest if it gives us lunch today that's that's all I can ask for really Actually, I'm pretty happy with that. That's way more than I was expecting. Another one on there. A lot of ants. Oh, that'd be quite nice, but that didn't much noise. Oh, hey, I think that'd be delish. I think that's probably it. I'll go and shove this in the compost and... Well, it's a warm and pretty soggy Thursday afternoon here, uh, but it doesn't really matter that it's soggy because we're going to be getting pretty soggy anyway because we're going to be doing the pond. Um, we have a pond on the plot. Um, it's a wildlife pond and we've got so much life living in it. There's uh, frogs and newts and fish and all sorts of water snails and water boatmen and these sort of strange see-through worm things and uh, basically it's just absolutely crawling with life but the main problem we've got with it is that um, so the angle of our allotment the sun comes in from this angle all morning and then it kind of hits the shade it hits the trees which give us the shade at about sort of in the middle of summer it's about four o'clock well it means that the pond has almost no shade on it and then it like gets a lot of sort of the algae and stuff on it so what we're trying to do is try and enclose it a little bit and create a bit of shade so we have planted a gunnera um, which is uh, quite exciting um, but what we're also going to try doing is because um, I've always wanted a water lily and we've actually bought one. It's called Attraction, it's pink and it's going in today and what we're hoping is that just having that little bit of extra surface that leaves on the surface is going to help uh, with the shade and we're also going to move some of the flag irises to kind of this end so that they uh, provide just that little bit more shade. What we're also doing at long last is getting rid of the blooming home base basket that mum put the flag irises in like a year ago 
and uh, it upsets me every time I look at it. So I, I basically can't explain how excited I am that that's not going to be there anymore. Um, because it basically just looked like a dumping yard. We've got a lot of oxygenating weed in the pond, um, which obviously we want to keep, but there's a lot of it and also a lot of it's really tangled up with that, um, with the blanket weed. So we're going to pull a load of it out and uh, rinse it off in a bucket and really try and sort of get as much of that out as we can and then throw what's left back in. Oh, it's really raining now. Yeah, so basically that's what we're doing today. Oh, it is raining. So this is the pond. Um, it's quite large actually and it's quite deep. Um, this is a water buttercup on that side and this one at the front here is a butomis, which is a water rush, which um, has got the most lovely pink umbral flowers. And over there, that is the flag iris in the blooming basket. You have a look with this when we pull it out. It's absolutely hideous, hideous. Okay, so we've got, we've divided the flag irises into three. And this is the first one I'm putting in. It just gonna weigh it down with rocks, otherwise it just float away. Okay, the maiden voyage of the water lily. I want it to be sort of roughly central because that's the deepest part of the pond. And there it is. Oh, I'm so happy with that. I'm so happy. Sorry, the plastic duck is there because an allotment neighbour uh, keeps leaving plastic animals around the pond. We had an alligator for ages. Um, now we've just got the duck. And there's the offending article. What a hideous monster. So, feeding day is normally a Thursday. Uh, but I didn't do it yesterday. So I'm doing it this morning. I'm going to be using the comfrey feed that I made three weeks back. Uh, I only made a tiny little amount because, uh, like I said, we've um, like dramatically reduced the amount of comfrey we've got. Uh, not really intentionally, it just all kind of got caught up with the cooch grass. So um, I took loads of it out and then what I saved is now in a pot. And then we're going to kind of propagate from there so we've got more of it for the future. But basically... I'm just straining this out and I'm going to use it today. It absolutely stinks. Um, I could just use it straight into the watering can from the bucket, but um, it's easier if I just put it in the bottle and I can see how much I'm using a bit 
a bit better than that. into the bottle without spilling any in yet. I try and tip it into a cup and I've tipped it all over the show, but never mind. So I'm just using like a dash. I sort of, um, I think it's about 20 mil in this, but I just do it by eye. So then it's just a case of running backwards and forwards with the watering can basically. Um, starting with the poly tunnel, I'll put about five watering cans worth in here. That's for the 17 different tomato varieties and then all the chilies and peppers that we've got at the front. That should do them just fine. Today I'm also doing the beans because they look like they could do with a bit of a, a bolster. They've really struggled so far this year. The hot, and the, so it started off, they had a bit of a cold snap after I planted them out and then we had the hot patch, so they're having a hard time. These are the outdoor tomatoes. They'll get a really good feed too. morning don't actually have a lot to do up here this morning I'm gonna pick some stuff for lunch we've got this red tomato which is from the rogue greenhouse tomatoes which is a Italian tree looks lovely and also the sun gold obviously uh, looking wonderful and the second truss is starting to go orange now as well which is excellent I don't think there's a tomato out there with like a better orange color than that it's just pure sunshine also got the uh, black jalapenos. I'll take a couple of them today too. They're looking, I love them. They're just, they're inky black. They're so dark. They're really extremely handsome. And uh, this is the Lola Rossa, which is a very attractive lettuce. I could pick them individually, but to be honest, I'm just using them as a cut and come again. So just taking the leaves off the outside because they just keep producing that way. Looks like coral. So I have to make some more comfrey feed today because um, I used it all yesterday, basically. But look at those hairs on the back. I was on Instagram the other day and I noticed that um, Homegrown Garden, who's Katrina, was using hers to fish out duckweed from her little pond. And I thought, hello, maybe I'll give that a go. And look at this. It's like a windscreen wiper. It's like so efficient. Look at that. It's just picked it all up. I don't really have time to do loads of it today. I'm just going to um, have a bit of a mess around and then um, I make the comfrey feed, obviously. And then I might actually, you know, have a go at doing a bit of this seriously because that picks it up better than basically anything I've tried to use. To be honest, every time I try and do anything around this pond, I just get distracted and end up staring in it and watching things moving around. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to get on with making the comfrey.
So there we go, same as before, jammed in the bucket, brick on top, just about covered with water, leave it for a couple of weeks. Done. Morning. It's about half past eight on Sunday morning. Uh, it is just so lovely there's not a cloud in the sky it's just gorgeous up here I'm having my cup of coffee it's meant to cloud over a bit at lunchtime today so we're getting in a bit of an early session um, what I'm doing today is I don't know if uh, yesterday so that was Saturday um, I put out a plot tour um, on YouTube I uploaded one and um, as I was doing that look around, I noticed quite how um, tightly packed the spring onions are that I sowed. Um, they're all Lilia spring onions. The first lot that I sowed, which we've now eaten, um, it wasn't fantastic germination. So I think I was a bit keen with the second lot. And um, I mean, normally the second sowing, which is like the direct sowing of the spring onions, I wouldn't bother moving them or transplanting them. They would just be where they are and they come up and then as they mature individually, you just pick out the biggest ones and that obviously then gives the smaller ones a bit more space and it works really well, but they are just too close together. It's like a hedge. So the bed that they're in right now was our early alliums bed. So that had the first bed for the leeks in it, which I transplanted into the new bed. Um, about a couple of weeks ago now they're all looking really good and there's also some red onions in this new bed that I've sown alliums is one of the things that we tend to be quite kind of careful about keeping them all together on the plot because uh, we have allium leaf miner here we really do need to keep them covered all the time spring onions it's not so much of a drama which is why I was leaving them in that top bed with the nipper because Really, the allium leaf mine only becomes a problem if the crops are in the ground for a long time because then they've got a chance to mature and then when you they kind of eat them all out from the inside and when you open them up they've got these little brown grubs in them, which isn't very nice. But if they're quite a quick maturing crop, so like the nipper leeks we've left uncovered because they're a pencil leek, you sow them, they're not in the ground anywhere near as long as the really big leeks, so we were just kind of leaving them, they were fine. And also the spring onions absolutely fine but now I'd quite like to use that space to sow some more carrots so I'm just going to shift them over to the other bed so that's basically what I'm doing this morning I mean I love spring onions anyway I think they're um, a really really worthwhile crop to sow I like to grow um, zebrune banana shallots as well but onions I don't I've got to admit Firstly, I don't really see the point of growing onions from sets because it's like you put a small onion in the ground and then seven months later you get a bigger onion out the ground. Like, it doesn't mean a lot to me. From seed, I can totally understand it. We used to grow quite a lot of onion from seed and the Zabrun shallots grow fantastically from seed. And they're a bit special and they've just got a really fantastic flavour. But onions, I just don't, I'm not a great fan of growing onions. But I'm trying red onions this year. Um, so we'll see how they go. Um, I love red onions. But what I was going to say about the spring onions, sorry, it's a ramble. What I was going to say about the spring onions is that I really like to use them like I would small onions for um, roasting. So, which is when you're doing, you know, a tray of vegetables that you're just roasting. And then uh, about 15 minutes before the end, you just top and tail the whole spring onions. You know, so they're about yay big and throw them in and they just are so sweet and so delicious with a load of garlic they're um, they're a real favorite but what that does mean is that i get through them like wildfire i think they're a really worthwhile crop um, everybody has their different things a lot of people absolutely love growing garlic um, and i understand that and i think probably if i had um, unlimited space I would grow enough potatoes and enough garlic, for example, for um, for the whole year if I could. But we don't, and so we tend to kind of pick and choose the things that are going to have the most effect for being homegrown. 
um, and spring onions are one of those for me. They just taste so different. Some things you just have to accept. I will never be able to grow enough garlic on this site for my year. And I don't find that it tastes that different. Like I grew elephant garlic a couple of years ago and that was great, loved that. Just standard garlic didn't really, didn't really do it for me. And yet I know that some people, that's one of the things that they really find just brilliant to grow and they love it. So everybody's got their things that they, that they really like. Right, well that's enough wittering for me. I'm gonna sit here, enjoy the sunshine and uh, finish my cup of coffee and then I will go and attack the spring onions. A cup of coffee, can you see that? Yeah. A cup of coffee before we start. It's very sunny. It's, yeah, it's, well it's quite, well, it's, what time is it, nine o'clock? Yeah. yeah, it's quite early for us to we be have, up here. Yeah, we have a glass of wine, Fine, well. we're drinking um, seafood chowder. Are you? Nice. Very nice. Okay, this is the bed they're moving into, currently covered with the Enviromesh to stop the leaf miner. And that's where I'm moving them from, next to the carrots. Enviromesh, by the way, is a fantastic uh, thing to have. It doesn't look very pretty because it's white, um, but it really does a great job. Thank you. <laughs> no space to sew the Lisbon though. Morning. Unbelievably, it's Monday again. Uh, don't really know what's happened there. But uh, today, all I'm going to be doing really is uh, probably having a bit of a rant about how wonderful Asturian cabbage trees are because I've got some growing up in the sort of the fruit cage come brassica cage at the other end and um, I've got to chop them back. Had the ones that are up there for about four years now, they're in their fourth year and uh, I'm basically a complete convert to the Asturian cabbage tree life. Um, I think they're absolutely amazing. If you follow me on Instagram, there's two things that I rant about most, and it's like Touchon carrots and Asturian cabbage trees. So I'm just gonna show you the new ones that I planted. You saw, um, if you watched my plot tour the other day, you will have seen both. Um, the ones that are on this end, the new ones, are the ones where the ladybird, wasn't a ladybird, Jessie, that would have been okay, uh, where the cabbage white was uh, laying her eggs. Um, but and then I'll show you the ones which are up in the cage at the top and um, 
um, they taste a lot like cabbage, like um, you would imagine, but they sort of, um, they use them a lot in Portugal and Spain as a cabbage leaf for doing the stuffing because they're huge and they're really, really supple, but they hold themselves together when you cook them. So they're really good for kind of manhandling and stuff. And uh, yeah, let's go and have a look at them. Okay, so these are like standard cabbages where um, you have the loose leaves on the outside and they form a really tight head in the middle, which is the bit that you eat. These are the tree cabbages, so they grow more like a kale on a stem, they don't heart up. This butterfly netting, uh, where these leaves are touching, that's where the um, butterflies are laying their eggs. But this is what the young plants look like. And this is the old plant, you can see how large the leaf is. But whereas on the standard cabbages, the very large leaves on the outside are really tough, you can't eat them. With the tree cabbage, these huge big leaves are exactly what you can eat. You can see that this is the old stuff, so they produce sort of lots of stems over a period of the four years or so that you can have them. And then the older ones get a bit gnarly and tough and the leaves aren't so big, and then they produce these beautiful new plumes of leaves, even though these ones are covered in white fly, but um, yeah, they're still absolutely perfect. So what I'm doing is just cutting out um, the older stems basically, and leaving the fresh stuff. So these are the first ones I've ever grown, and I was told when I planted them that they can last about four years, so I'm guessing this is gonna be the last flush for them. Um, but they're still looking fantastic. So uh, just chopping back the old and see if we can keep the fresh stuff going. I'm gonna give these bits to the girls because, um, well, for two reasons really, firstly, they love eating them and they're good for them. But also if you hang up something like this inside their cage, it gives them a bit of something to do. It's a bit of a game really. Well, I'm really pleased I got that done. I've been meaning to do that for ages and the girls are pretty happy with them in there they'll rip them to shreds in seconds. Even though they are tiny chickens, they can be pretty destructive. Okay, well, it's, it's pretty hot up here this afternoon. I am going to just finish having a bit of a pot around. I've got to water the greenhouse and the polytunnel, and then I'm gonna head back and go and have a glass of wine. So um, what with it being Monday, I'll see you there. Evening all. Well, I found my glass of wine. Um, it's been a really, oddly busy week. Um, I keep thinking I'm going to kind of uh, run out of stuff but really um, it's not happening yet. Um, but then again it's a bit like that having an allotment or a garden anyway isn't it? You think oh well what have I got to do? Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. You always always find something to do. So highlights of the week definitely getting the water lily in the pond. I can't tell you how excited I am. You know, um, so I didn't mention it at the time, but when I've just been looking back at the video and editing it, I can see that it's a bit of a jump. So when we were clearing the pond and putting the um, water lily in, um, the pond was really clear, like you couldn't see any of that green on top. But that's part of the reason that we want to put the shade in, is because um, it had been raining like for two days, and when it rains, like the water goes really, really clear. But um, when it's had sun on it for a couple of days, it gets that really thick green. Um, it's not really an algae because when it grows, uh, if you leave it longer and longer, it kind of develops leaves and it does kind of grow up off the surface. Of yeah, so if anybody does actually know what that is or what the actual name of it, I haven't looked actually, I haven't looked it up, but um, it does choke everything else out. So we do scoop it off. But how effective was the comfrey leaf? I was pretty impressed with that actually. So I'll probably, um, you know, amuse myself for a couple of hours one day doing that. I know that certain parties uh, will take the piss out of me for moving those spring onions, but that's how I like to do things. And like, there's no right or wrong way really of gardening. Unless you kill the thing, that's not so good. But other than that, it's just everybody does it a different way. And that's what's quite exciting about it. I've said before, that's why I really like this kind of communication that I can have with all of you and uh, on Instagram and here and everywhere else. Um, well, it used to be in the pub, but I don't have that anymore. And everywhere else, because everybody's got a different way of doing things. It's trial and error, 
and people find different things work. So that's part of the pleasure of it, really. You can never know everything. And equally, there being no right and wrong, there's also like wildly different styles of gardening, which also makes it exciting. But my uh, plot neighbour and actual like neighbour, she only lives up the road from me, um, is, I don't even know how to describe it. Like everything she does is so pretty and well thought out. Like it's none of this, just grab the nearest pot. So she dropped me round. She's been doing um, pea shoots. We were discussing it the other day and she's like, oh, I've sewn you some, you know, I'll bring them round. When I sew something for somebody, like it's, you know, in a tray or something like that, look what she presented me with this afternoon. Like, is that not ridiculous? Where's the plastic tray that's all like crumbling at one edge and like the unevenly sewn pea shoots? Look at that. It's insane. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I can tell you when she gets a return, a return grow from me, it's not going to look that pretty. So yeah, we've got, um, so what did we do this week? Spring onions moved, I tidied up the Asturian cabbage trees. I am trying to get, I used to have a website which had um, like a blog attached to it and I'm trying to get that back up and running because I used to like collect recipes on there. Some of my own, some were recipes from other people. I have a really, really good recipe for stuffed cabbage rolls, which I do need to get up there. But yeah, I am trying to get it back up and running again. So things should start collecting there. I've got the link to the website anyway underneath, but there's not much there at the moment, unfortunately. It's just basically, it's not much good for you lot because it's just a link straight back through to YouTube. <laughs> Somebody was asking me what I'm drinking a couple of weeks ago. This is a Petit Mount Seng from 2008. It's very nice. Mm. So cheers. Yeah, so another week, chaps. Um, it was lovely to have you with me. If you enjoyed it, give me the thumbs up. And um, if you haven't already, subscribe. Um, if you wanna link me to anything, do stick me on. I'm not actually on Facebook. If you know any sort of like gardening groups on Facebook who might be interested in watching, I'd really appreciate you sticking a link on there for me. That would be amazing. It's normally about now that I'm like, oh, and next week I'm going to do this, this and this. I've got absolutely no idea what I'm doing next week. No idea. Yeah, so drop me a note below if you've got anything to ask me. If you do come and find me on Instagram, I always say come over and say hi. If you're going to send me a private message, can you like say more than hi? Because only that... Um, I've answered quite a few, I get a lot of just highs and um, all smiley faces, which is lovely, it's better than a sad face, but um, tends to be people trying to sell me things. And the message I get back is always something like, Dr Genevieve solved my toenail infection. You know, so, so if you are coming over to say like, hello from like on here or vice versa or whatever, just um, like say slightly more than hi, if you wouldn't mind. I'll um, see you next week, chaps. Mm -hmm.